give deliver us what the Lord has laid on your heart. Amen. Everybody that's going to preach with him, say amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor. Give me just a second. I'll return here. I'm glad he set me up real good tonight. Those of y'all that have your Bible, you can turn with me to book of Mark chapter 5 I'm not going to have you stand because I want to read several verses it says and they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes and when he was come out of the ship immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. I want to speak to you for a few moments tonight on this subject, broken to beautiful. You see, this man, Brother David, lived a life of torment that, as I've read this story, I've thought often, Sister Maria, that none of us could probably understand, but as I go on and read this and study, I find that there's far more people that can see this man in their life than what we may think there is a multitude of people among us in our world today who daily live with torments things brother Terry that have them bound up with chains and that and for the sake of illustrating, y'all seeing where I'm going, the, the Bible says here that this man's chains, he, he constantly broke them. But in reality, Brother Larry, the chains were never broke. This man was constantly bound every day by the things that were in his mind, tormenting him day and night as he sat in the tombs crying out. I can relate to that, brother. I've been bound by things. Things that kept me captive when I, so to speak, was living free, as the world would say that you're living free, not living by a set of rules, uh, Brother G.L., that they say we live by. But in reality, I was the one bound up who was not free. See, that's what the devil tries to tell you, that you're free out there, but you're not free. When he's got you wrapped up, living in torment, in that lifestyle that you daily go into, and you can't seem to find your way out of it, 
you're not free. I don't care what he tells you. The Bible says he's the, a liar and the father of it. You're not free. You're a bound, just like Legion here. Could not escape. He got to the point that the, he, he had to live among the tombs. People did not want to be around him. These this tombs fit the situation that this man lived in. When you think of tombs, you think dark, dreary, scary place, somewhere that you don't want to be. Not nice in there. You, you don't want to be in the graveyard. That's where this man's home was. And I think it's important for us to realize that, that a lot of the world, People sitting among us today have made our home in places that they're dark, they're dreary, there's no life there. The devil has sucked the life plumb out of you. But I'm here to tell you, when Jesus shows up, it don't matter how dark the place is. It don't matter how dreary it looks. It don't matter how bound up you are. It doesn't matter because he can turn the tomb into a place of life. You see, as the Bible says, this man was always in the mountains and the tombs crying and cutting himself. I never was one to afflict pain on myself, but I know that there's people that do that. I have heard of people doing that. And I have said this before as I have have, have preached about this man. I can see him sitting there with a rock or, or possibly something he had fashioned into a knife. And quite possibly trying to take his own life, Sister Maria, for the agony that he was living in. But I look at it two ways. He couldn't take his life. The torment was so bad. But God had a purpose for this man. He did not want him to go. I do understand if you want to take your life, you can. But for some reason, this man was daily cutting himself. And he continued to live, so to speak. His life seemed to be distorted beyond repair. The demons had complete control of his body, and of his mind. As I said a minute ago, people were scared to even go where he lived. They did not want to be around this man for how he acted. And he was no doubt covered with scars from the cutting of his self. Wounded. The, the, the inside wounds. We, there's some of us that could probably uh, uh, feel some of that. That because obviously I, I don't know the pain that some of, some of you people have dealt with. Just the same as you don't know some of the pain I've dealt with. We have wounds on the inside, Brother Larry, that only God can heal. And until we realize that, we're going to keep dealing with them pains. But we got to give them to God. He's the only one that can fix them. You can't take another drink. You can't pop another pill. You can't smoke another joint. You can't do another line. It's not going to fix the wounds and the problems of your life. I don't know how much I can stress that. Things like this, it it just tears me up when you see these things. And you see people's lives being ruined by things. we got to get to the healer. He wants to heal us. He says he, he is the God that healeth us. And it's all kinds of healing. It doesn't matter. It don't matter if it's cancer, depression. It doesn't matter. He can heal every one of them. I, when you think of depression, I have to think about this, man. Depression is a problem. It's running wild. People can't seem to deal with it. 
And I don't want to call her out. My wife dealt with it for years. And she'll stand to tell you today that if she hadn't turned it over to God, she would still be dealing with it right now. Taking a pill that the doctor was saying was going to help her. But it don't help. See, that, that doctor don't have the answer in that pill bottle. The answer is on our knees, crying out to prayer to God. As I stated earlier, this man probably would no doubt have probably rather been dead than continue to live in this state of agony, despair, torment every day of his life. You see, Brother David, I, that's one thing I don't know about. I've had bad days, but I didn't live in bad days every day of my life. There were days in there that I had good days, and things were okay. But not this man. It was a daily struggle dealing with the torments of his life. Not a break. Not one break. You see, but that's where my God shines. It's where people say, we don't even want you around. You're, you're so much of a basket case. Get out of here. We can't handle you. God can. There ain't no doubt he can. You see, this, this man, no doubt, was headed. It's sin. Sin is what kills us. The, the things I've been talking about, they're sin. You know, Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's no hope, Sister Nadine, other than Jesus Christ. If, if we do not receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost according to the Bible, that's all I can go off of, sin is going to kill us. It's, it's going to cause us to be lost. We will pay the price for sin. This man obviously was paying the price every day of his life. I do not know what he done to deserve to be in this condition. I have no idea. The Bible does not say. It just starts out with where he was at in the tomb. But as soon as Jesus showed up, things began to change. Even the devils knew they were leaving. See, they know who Jesus is. But I heard a, a minister, it just so happened just last week, I, I watched a sermon. And I, believe, I believe it was Brother Arnold that said, uh, and I could be mistaken, that in this story, he never looked at it like this, but the devils were in a, essentially asking a prayer of God when they said, will you just send us into the, into the swine? He answered the devil's prayer. Now, why would we think he wouldn't answer our prayer? That's something to think about. As these demons were requesting to be cast into the swine, he done it for them, Sister Leanne. So why of me being a child of God or you being a child of God, do we think that he's not going to take care of something for us if we ask? He don't want us living in that torment. He does not, but it's not going to be something that, poof, it's gone. We have to take some matters into our own hands sometimes. He's not going to mysteriously take a beer bottle or a whiskey bottle out of somebody's hand. They have to want to. No matter how messed up, life, how messed up somebody's life may seem to themselves, or to those around them, when Jesus gets a hold of it, they'll never be the same. Never be the same. Second Corinthians says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
when, when God says all, Brother David, he means all. He's going to change your whole life. It might not happen overnight. It can be a process. That's how it usually happens. It's a process. It takes time. You work on something today. You start getting that taken care of. You work on something the next day. You start getting that taken care of. But you keep going forward in the process. You don't ever take your hand or take yourself out from under the master's hand, so to speak. But there's one thing that I want to talk about just for a minute. If you'll notice, those of you who know about the Bible, well, this will not be anything new to you. But in Mark 4, Jesus and the disciples were getting ready to go across the sea. And Jesus said, let us go to the other side. And I have to say, the Bible does not say this, but immediately when they reach the other side, Brother Pete, he runs in to leave them. I have to believe that there was something different in that man's cry that day. For God to know, I got to go to the other side. There's somebody that needs me. That's no different than you finding your way to an altar of repentance. When he hears you say, Lord, I can't do this no more. I can't live a life of torment. See, if you read more about that story, the sea was raging. You shouldn't have been traveling the sea. There was a bad storm, but God said, I got to go. We got to go to the other side. There's somebody that needs me. And when somebody needs him and he's calling out to him, he will show up. promise you he will not leave you there to live in torment again when you cry out to him with all your heart he will meet you at an altar of repentance and you can ask me say how do you know I know because I've been there he met me there and he's met me there a lot of times since I can't stress how much the devil plays that, I'm going to call it the family card, Sister Maria, that you'll never be anything. You come from a long line of drunks. Or you come from a long line of drug abusers. You come from a long line of womanizers. That ain't how it's got to be. What kind of testimony would it be to be able to stand up, Brother Larry, and say, I broke the chain that the devil had of my family. It ended right here. You see, he took, I look back and see, and they was, they was alcoholics. They was drug addicts. But not me. It ended right here. He's not going to drag me down like that. It stops right now. You see, we tend to forget also when we look at some of these people. And we, we like to think sometimes we know God can do anything. But when we see somebody in, in the shape such as Legion here, I don't think that we truly grasp how badly that God wants to show out on these type of people. 
Because we, we view them as being untouchable, Brother David. But they're not. But like I said, they, they have to cry out to him. He's not going to do anything against your will. You have to want to be changed. I can't stress that enough. And it's something else I'm going to tell you. And I've said it before and I'll probably say it again. The devil doesn't care for you to say, I've got to change. I've got to straighten up. He don't care if you say that. He could care less. He gets scared, Brother Larry, when you start acting on it. He hears people talk all the time. I, I mean, I myself, and, and I, I'll be a little open with you. There, there's things I plan on doing, Sister Marie. I'm going to do better here. I'm going to do better here. He don't care until I start doing it. We cannot ever doubt that no matter how broken, how distraught, how messed up, how much in torment someone's life is, when the master comes on the scene, he can make what was once broken, to be honest, good for nothing, and make them a beautiful, worthwhile vessel. That not only that, I'm closing with this, not only that, That when people see you, they will not even recognize who you are anymore. That is the impact that Jesus Christ, through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, can have on your life. Do not let the devil tell you any different. It doesn't matter what you have done. You could have sinned right before you walked through that door and come and sit down on these pews. He can take care of it. It doesn't matter what you have seen in your time. To have your mind all messed up. He can fix that too. It's nothing to him. He was all powerful. He specializes in these kind of things. How many people are walking today that we don't know when we pass at a church conference or something that could have been just like this man right here. But they prayed a prayer of repentance. They cried out in the tomb, a place of death, that there was no life. But what does Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, when, when he shows up, he brings life with him. It don't matter how dead that tomb is or how hopeless that situation may seem. When, when God shows up, life is coming to that situation. Thank you very much.